Hi everyone, this is Dave from Pandora Prime Recon, and today I decided to shoot just a quick video, less about the game of the Warhammer 40,000 CCG and more about kind of the collecting side. So we're, what I want to go over today are kind of like rarities of cards, um, promos, what was released and when, and kind of tell what, let's say if you decide to get into the game, you pick up a collection off Eevee or whatever, just what kind of cards you're, you're looking at what you're getting yourself into. Um, so if you're interested in the game or any of my other content, feel free to check out the videos on my channel or visit my blog at pandoraprimerecon.com. So let's just go into more straightforward stuff. Um, so if you don't know, the rarity of the cards in the game are denoted by the little dots on the bottom right hand corner of each card. Um, so the two letters usually denote which uh, expansion set it's printed in. So this is Pandora Prime um, and one dot means it's common. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, two dots means that's uncommon and usually I believe there are about three of these in every pack. Um, I'm trying to remember if there are any exceptions, but you're probably going to get three uncommons in every booster pack no matter what expansion you're looking at. Um, moving up, we have regular rares which are three dots. So again, you can see this is a rare from Pandora Prime, the first set. It's a rare from Rath's Bodyguard. And the last kind of standard rarity uh, is four dots and I don't think there's an actual like name for it I guess you can just call it um, a foil rare because for the most part I guess the easiest way of calling them is like mythic rares like in magic um, because these rares these are printed in almost every set um, except for the last one Malagrum Hive um, so four dots means it's a separate type of rare aside from regular rares that appeared in I guess I would estimate probably one in every six packs that's why I draw the comparison to mythic rares in Magic because that's kind of the same um, odds of opening one in the booster pack. And again, so um, Pandora Prime, Cronus Campaign, Delos 5, and Verticon all had this type of rare, this type of foil rare. Um, because for the most part, like land, for example, the land, this Land Raider is only printed in foil. There's no non-foil version of it. And so it's not like a promo. This is an actual card that's in the standard set. And that's just a few more examples. Um, see, for Chronos Campaign, the Scythe Hero Jewel is one of the foil rares. This is a standard, quote-unquote, mythic rare from Cronus. And from Delos, you have Redemptor Kurinov, who's kind of the four dot, one of the four dot rares. And lastly, for Verticon, um, you have, for example, Big Moon, Big, Bad Moon, Big Knob, sorry, is one of the four dot rares from Verticon. And Verticon was the last set to have um, these four dot rares printed. So for example, if you look at Malagrim Hive, you have the Avatar of Cain, which is obviously like a centerpiece rare of the set, but again, it's only three dots. There are no four dot cards in Malagrim Hive. I'm not entirely sure what the reason is for that. Um, it may be because this was the final expansion of the set. Maybe they want to, you know, cut on costs for printing or whatnot, or they need to make room for the extra promo that it was included in every Malagrim Hive pack, which I'll go into a little bit later. Um, but for whatever reason, there are no four dot rares in Malagrum Hive, so, so don't expect to see any of these. So moving on to kind of the promo side of things. Um, so there was, first of all, there was the redemption program that Sabretooth Games ran. And this was a, kind of a program where you'd make a user account online, you'd log the games you'd play, and then you'd get points for playing them. So if it was like a kitchen table game, you get a certain amount of points. If you played it in a sanctioned event, you'd gain more points. And so your account would accrue points. And once you got certain levels, you'd be able to unlock certain promos. And some of these would be promos like um, alternate foil versions of existing cards. So for example, I showed you the non-foil Bale Predator. So this is the promo version. And so um, I'm not entirely 100% sure on this, but you could, um, as part of the redemption program, I'm sure on this part, uh, as part of the redemption program, you could send in booster wrappers and other kind of there are one or two kind of like promo cards that counted as points as a currency. So you could send in booster wrappers and other kinds of these cards to get, to be able to purchase the cards you unlock for your account. So for example, let's say you played like 20 games and then you're able, you rank up and you're able to unlock a Bill Predator now. So then you'd send in booster packs to get enough points to be able to redeem, to get a Bill Predator in the mail. And you'd probably get them in like four to six weeks or, or whatever amount of time it was. But yeah, you may notice that if you, um, pick up, you know, a random collection, you might get some of these foil cards. Um, it's to show that these are actually promos. There are no, there are no foil versions of cards that were printed 
in the game, if that makes sense. So for example, like you can't open a foil bread, pale, bill predator in a booster pack of Pandora Prime. They only appeared in non-foil. And so same goes for rares. There are rares, rare version of these as well. So again, I showed you the non-foil version of Rare Last Bodyguard. So this is the foil version. This is a promo. You can't get a foil Rare Last Bodyguard in any other booster pack, except for Amalgam Hive, which I'll go into again later. And kind of the premium version of these redeemable foils were these rares because these were not printed in the actual base set. You could only get these yellow die promo cards by redeeming points from their Dantrum program. And so these were pretty sought after. Um, actually, for the most part, they're not like super strong. Like if you look at Sergeant Adeon, for example, like it's, it's a serviceable card, but it's not like a super powerful card. So I guess that's maybe how they balanced it. So like some of the strongest cards in the game weren't actually these promos, uh, but were actually the base cards. So that was a good way of kind of balancing the power levels. But again, like these yellow die cards, if you see these, um, just try and hold on to them because they're a little bit harder to get. Like you can't open them booster packs um, for the most part. So moving on to a couple other promos. Um, I mentioned that there are one or two kinds of cards that you could send in for additional points to redeem, and this is one of them. Um, this is a for your service to the Emperor card. It doesn't really do anything. There's no gameplay value to this card, um, but I believe during some events, um, tournament organizers would hand them out as prizes or as participa sorry, participation awards, and you could take these. I think they're worth like a booster pack or two each card, and then you could send these in along with um, whatever booster packs you had to to redeem, um, to purchase uh, redeemable promos. Um, or you can just hold on to them. Um, again, they're not really worth anything. Um, I op actually opened a Malagrim Hive booster box and almost half of the promo cards in the Malagrim Hive packs were these cards, which is kind of a bummer. But on the plus side, uh, I guess I have a bunch of these and I can just give them away to people. Um, so I mentioned a couple times um, that you could get promos in Malagrim Hive, which is the final set. It's definitely a non-standard set. Um, so with Malagrim Hive, whether or not the Serpent of the Games knew that the game was going to be discontinued or not, um, I imagine that because of their redemption program, they had a, a surplus of all these promos left over that they're going to give away through either their redemption program or through tournaments and things like that. And so what they did was that they inserted one of these promos into every pack of Malagrim Hive. So whether it's a card like For Your Service to the Emperor, or if it's a yellow die promo like Sergeant Adeon, or if it's an alternate foil like Raven Last Bodyguard, one of these would be included in every pack. And it's not just promos, it's also foil rares from the first two sets. Um, so like, for example, you could get uh, a Land Raider in one of the packs, uh, you could get a Scythe Hero Jewel in one of the packs. Um, I don't believe it extends beyond Pandora Prime and Coronis, but um, you're going to get one of these foil cards in every pack. Um, so just to move on to some of the other foils that you might get, there are also foil versions of Sector cards. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just Pandora Prime and Coronis which have foil sectors. I could be wrong, um, but those are the only ones I've seen so far. Um, you could also get uh, foil sector cards, not sector cards, uh, fleet cards. I'm not sure if these were included in the Malagrim Hive packs, but you could definitely get these um, somehow as well, either from you know playing in events or um, the Redemption program, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but um, these are also these also exist, so keep a lookout for these. Um, so again, here's another example. It's a foil Eldar fleet card. And I got this when I was still playing in high school. I'm not sure if you were able to get it, but here is a fleet card that's foil, but it's also stamped. Um, and how I got this was back in high school, um, one of the employees, I think it was uh, Steve Horvath, who I think went on to go you know, lead, I think he was president of Fantasy Flight Games, Fantasy Flight Games, sorry. Um, but he was in, he's in the gaming business for a long time. And so he had this little thing he posted on a forum back in, like, you know, in the 90s or late, early 2000s. I'm old. Anyways, um, so he had this little contest where he was building a space marine army and he wanted, he, he wanted forum goers to send in one, mi one miniature from like a space marine force. Um, and in, in exchange, he would basically send you a promo. And so what I did is like I had like an old Marnius Calgar miniature, so I sent that in and then he sent this back. So it was pretty cool. Um, so it's actually got like a stamp on it and it's got like a Sabretooth Games stamp. So it's like a corporate seal, it says Washington. Um, I'm not sure if you can get these anymore, uh, but it's basically just like a foil fleet card that's stamped. But um, it's a pretty cool kind of like token from when I was still playing back in the day. Um, I don't think it's worth a whole lot, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, so lastly, I'll go over some of the more um, 
expansion specific uh, oddities, if, if you will. Um, so I guess we'll start with Delos because um, there wasn't anything special about Corona's campaign in terms of like, um, kind of they, they tried to introduce like certain types of gimmicks for certain sets. Um, Delos 5 was one where it was kind of a snow themed planet because you had like space wolves and whatnot. And so one of the cool things they did is that they made the fleet cards transparent. So I think that's pretty cool. See, that's a Dark Eldar one. Let that focus or not. Um, so again, so you have the Zinch fleet card, it's also from Delos. And Cult of Speed, it's also from Delos. And you can take a look at, so I have some of the sector cards from Delos 5. So this is, you know, for example, Bastion in the sleeve. If you take it out, it's a transparent card. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess the other one I'll talk about is uh, Invasion Verticon. So the interesting thing about Invasion Verticon is that they made these really friggin' huge um, fleet cards and sector cards. I don't think they're actually regular sized version of these, um, which is kind of a bummer because they do take up a bit of space. Like they're hard to fit into a deck box. Um, but I guess this is kind of like their their gimmick for this specific set. Um, and so this one came out after Delos 5. So again, you have Catachans, Dark Angels, um, I think it was High Fleet Kraken and Craft World Alley Talk were the other two um, fleet cards to be introduced. And then again, you can see like, these are really frigging huge uh, sector cards. You can compare to like the regular size ones, they're a fair bit bigger. Um, it's also kind of a pain because, you know, when you play a game of 40k CCG, like, it takes up a fair amount of space because uh, you have to line up all the sector cards next to each other. And so you can see like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really make for, you know, efficient use of table space. But these are neat cards. It's just kind of a bummer that, you know, they didn't include them in regular size. So you actually have both options for players. Um, it'd be like if you were to play like, you know, EDH or Commander in Magic of the Gathering, if all of your, if all of your legends were like this size, it'd be a bit of a pain in the butt. Anyways, um, I hope that gives you a kind of a, clear overview about um, some of the, you know, the promo cards that were included, some of the rare cards that were included, you know, in the game. Um, there's a lot of cool little, like, you know, little neat facts and tidbits about some of the cards were included, some of the foils that came out, some of the ones that were released. And I'm sure, like, obviously, I think, I don't think I have the full picture on all of them. I think this is just kind of a, this is kind of a good overview, but I'm sure there's like one or two other kinds of oddities of rares out there um, and foils and, you know, limited time promos and things like that. But I think this covers maybe like 95% of them. Um, so again, I hope this helped, hope this, you know, help shed some light on the game and like, you know, some of the rare cards and what you're looking for, um, that kind of thing. I will say that like most of the strongest cards in the game aren't actually like, you know, these fancy foils. Um, I'd probably say that most of the strongest cards in the game were printed in Pandora Prime, especially with, you know, Chaos, um, Space Marines, um, to a lesser extent Orcs. Um, Orcs had a lot of stronger cards as the game went on. Um, but I, I'd say that for like to make a strong deck, you don't need to find like these really weird, like limited promos. Like you can build a pretty strong deck with some of the rares that were included in the base sets. Um, so I hope this helped, hope this shed some, some light on again on, on the game. Um, if you want to le learn more about the game and some of the content I've created about the game, again, you can check out some of the videos on this YouTube channel, uh, but you can also check out the blog where I write a number of articles on the game itself. It's uh, pandoraprimerecon.com. Again, this is Dave from Pandora Prime Recon, and thanks for watching.